So in this tutorial we'll be modeling a screwdriver um, similar to this one. So the first thing we'll do is I'll just delete this one out of the scene. Okay, so the first thing then is create a cylinder. So cylinder, give it 24 sides and then just scale that until it looks about right. Into edit mode, delete the top face and the bottom face, and then we'll select the top. Um, into edge mode, sorry, select this one, and then we'll select every fourth. So we'll do that by selecting the fourth one along. Control Shift plus 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 plus, and that'll keep selecting in the same pattern all the way around. Uh, and we'll do the same at the bottom here. So that one, and then this one. Control Shift plus 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 plus. There we are. And then we'll scale those in along uh, to press shift Z, so we're only doing it along the X and Y. And then select the out one, outer one, sorry, and then uh, shift G. And we want to select all face uh, edges that have got a similar angle, so face angles. And then control B, bevel, and bring it in somewhere like that. And then maybe I'll Z along normals and just bring those out a little bit. In fact, beg your pardon, should be Alt S like that something like that okay and we'll press number two select the top edge loop EZ and then we'll do EZ again S to scale that out and we'll scale out if I do control R bring that to there control R bring that to there Select this one, right click. Ah, in fact, before we do that, edit, you need to go into your preferences, and if you've not already got it turned on, uh, do a quick search for loop and then enable loop tools at the top there. And then once you've done that, so right click, loop tools, circle, and then do the same for this one. Right click, loop tools, circle. And that gives us two perfect circles. Uh, the vertices aren't very spread out though, not not very evenly spread out, so we'll, uh, what's the best way to do this, Control R, we'll add two extra edge loops, and then SZ to scale them away from each other, and then we'll do a right click, loop tools, and space, and then we'll do RZ, and just bring that back around until it looks about lined up correctly, maybe, maybe about there, Yep. And then we'll do a control R, um, we'll give it six loop cuts, and then select every other, so that one, that one, hmm. I think maybe we'll give it seven edge cuts instead. So control R, seven, and then we'll select that one, that one, and that one. And then we'll do a scale, scale that outwards or inwards, I think inwards is probably better. And then we'll select this edge loop as well, this one and this one and this one. And then we'll do a control B to bevel and give that one uh, segment by using your mouse wheel. Just come out and have a quick look at that. So I think the top edge is a bit too high. So back into edit mode, select the top edge, G twice, and then we can move that wherever we want. If you hold down Alt, uh, you can also move it along the projected angle of the original face, but we'll take it down to about there. Yeah, that should be fine. And we'll do a E, Z, S, bring that in, right click, loop tools, circle, right click, uh, in fact we'll do E, S, right click, loop tools, space, R, Z, until it's lined up properly, like that, and then we'll do a E, Z, to bring that up a little bit, and then an E, S to scale that in, E, S again, and then Alt, M, Alt M rather, and then uh, at center. Okay.
and that's the basic shape for the top I uh, just need to finish the bottom down here so I think we'll actually scale these outwards so S shift Z and we can scale them just outwards not on the Z axis we'll put an extra loop here bring that down a little bit select the bottom loop scale that in yeah something like that um, I think we'll actually use that we'll s turn that to a circle and then we'll do ES 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 and then uh, F to fill um, Alt M rather and we'll do that at the centre and just add a few extra loops around here like that so go into vertex mode by pressing 1 choose the bottom one there turn on uh, proportional editing at the top and just make sure you choose sphere mode and then if we move that down on the Z axis and use the mouse wheel we can extend the influence and then make sure that we get a perfect curve so that when we smooth it uh, there won't be any artifacts so F3 smooth shade I mean we are getting it, the reason we're getting a few artifacts there is because of the spacing isn't uh, even along here so number two edge mode right click loop tools space in fact this is probably going to be easier if we just right click all of these XV delete those vertices and just start again and what we'll do is we'll right click ES and this time we'll we'll um, space the vertices straight away and then do RZ until it's lined up RZ up need to turn off proportional editing if you've still got it turned on and then RZ until that's about correct ok and then we'll do a E, S, scale that in a bit more. Control R, add a few um, edge loops there, and then select the middle one, and then just do a uh, E S again, and then Alt M, and then at center, and then vertex mode. Choose the middle one, and we're the same again. Choose proportional editing, and make sure you've got the a sphere uh, mode selected, GZ, move that down and just move the uh, mouse wheel until it's affecting the vertices that you want it to. So about there. And then that's much better. So go into uh, the modifiers panel and turn on subdivision surface. Maybe give it two and then we're getting that sort of shape so that looks fine to me uh, if you want to you can harden these edges up a little bit by going into edit mode going into face mode so just turn this subdivision off temporarily and select this one and then control shift and select the bottom there and that will select that full region and then I to insert and then if you go back you turn your subdivision back on uh, you'll see that we're getting more of a, a harsh edge and you can do that all the way around um, so I will actually do that so it's like this one and then this one this one this one this one this one Then we'll insert those as well until you get it how you want it, so somewhere like that. And then we're getting a much harsher edge all the way around on those ones. I'll leave the top ones, but if you want to do that, uh, then you can. So I probably want to flatten this top up a little bit. So number two, choose edge mode, and then just GZ, bring that up, and turn off proportional editing. GZ, bring that up somewhere like that. 
and then we're getting more of a, uh, a flatter edge on the top. Okay. So that's that. Now for the neck of the screwdriver. So shift A mesh, then we'll choose cylinder again, but this time we'll choose 16 segments. And then we'll do uh, GZ to move that upwards. And then into edit mode. And then we'll select the, go into isolation mode by pressing forward slash. Select the top face and the bottom face. Delete those. Back out of isolation mode, and then we'll select the top edge loop. GZ to move that upwards. Something like that. And then we'll add a new edge loop, so Control R, bring that up to the top there. And one more. Bring that up there. And we'll select. Uh, every uh, 90 degrees, so that one, that one, and this one, I think. No, this one. And then we'll scale those in until we've got a cross shape, something like that. And then these ones will bring down, so the ones that are opposite the inner part of the cross. Bring those down like that. Then select the top edge loop and scale that right in. And then do a F to fill, I to inset, G, Z just to give that a, a rounded top. And we'll also press number three and do the same we did below. So number three. Shift and then Control click to select a region. So Shift to add one and then Control Shift to uh, expand that. And then insert that again as we did before. And we'll just um, turn on subdivision for this now. So subdivision surface. I'll give that maybe two. And then F3 and shade smooth. And that's given us a nice. Uh, clean edge at the top. And the last thing is to create the material, so if we go into lighting mode and go into render mode. So this one, I'll create a new material, maybe give this a, a red plastic, so turn the roughness down, something like that. And this one will give a metal, a sort of a chrome finish. So just turn the up to up the metallic and then turn the roughness down until it's getting the uh, sort of a chrome effect, something like that. Yeah, that looks fine. Yeah, so that's it. Hopefully that helps, and thanks for watching.